Let's go, baby. Welcome to the Athletes and Asses podcast. I'm your host, Noah Lack, and I bring on elite athletes to chat about a business topic, whether it's venture capital, retail, sales, crypto. Your favorite athletes know a lot more about business than you think, but how would you know that from just watching mainstream media? You're going to learn a topic of business here, but you're also going to learn a lot about the athletes themselves. Tune in. Please like, subscribe, give us a follow because we're bringing the heat. Let's get it. You know, I had this idea and I called my advisor. He's like, you believe in it? Go for it. At that moment, it was like, yeah, this is everything I got. I got nothing to my name, but I, f- I felt confident in the idea. You know, I know that God will provide for me either way. And I uh, was excited to go for it. Let's go, baby. Welcome to another episode of the Athletes and Assets podcast. I'm joined by my guy, Matt Mooney, professional basketball player, had a stint with the Cleveland Cavaliers, the New York Knicks, is now in Turkey, balling it up, and is also the founder of Athletic LLC, a little shot tracker, a little AI, amazing basketball tool that I hope you guys will check out. But Matt, before we dive into it, we got to skip the small talk. I do this with every overseas hooper I have on the podcast. You're in Turkey right now. How do you say... Pass the ball in Turkish. Oh man! Uh, <laughs> Come no on, idea. baby, learn that Turkish. Come on. <laughs> no, I, I got Mariba, which is hello. Gurushu's is goodbye. Nestleson is how are you, and that's about it for me. Gucci shoes is goodbye. Yeah, pretty much. Gura shoes. Gura shoes. Okay. Yeah. And then what is Nestle? No, it's it's uh, Nestle Sun. So I don't Nestle actually. Sun. Yeah, it's how are you, and you say E, which is good. E, wow! Yeah, I'm saying Nestle Sun. So, I wow. uh, I didn't think I'd be in Turkey this long, so I didn't bother learning. But here I am. <laughs> Man, that Turkish education is different. That is, uh, those those are a mouthful for just solid oh, words. Oh, it, it's terrible, terrible. I have no <laughs> idea what they're saying. Yeah, I mean, man, the, it, very entertaining words, though. I will say. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, thanks for joining us, man. Um, what city specifically in Turkey are you? I should have probably asked this beforehand, but where are you right now? Yeah, I'm in Samson, so it's north coast of Turkey. Istanbul is the big city everybody knows, but yep. uh, I was there last year. This year I'm playing in a town called Samson. Samson, that's how you pronounce it. Awesome. Give us your professional athletic state of the union right now. You're in the middle of the season. Uh, how are you feeling? Where's the team? Um, and, and how are we doing right now? It's <sighs> Yeah, team's not doing too well. Uh, it's okay. uh, it's a bit frustrating. Team's not doing too well. I'm not even going to tell you what our record is. You can look it up if you want. Um, doing okay. Personally, I'm doing all right. Could be playing better. Uh, but you know, we just added a new big guy who's helping us a lot. We've we've uh, you know, our last few games have all been tight. Um, just lost to uh, Karsheka, one of the top teams in the league, by two. So that one hurts. Um, but yeah, other than that, I like Turkey. You know, my fiance is over here with me. Um, I like the city. It's on the coast. It's seaside. And uh, yeah, life is good otherwise. Man, life is good. And I appreciate you. It's 10 p.m. where you are, man. That's 11.30 a.m. here. I'm bright-eyed, bushy-tailed. You know, you're over there hopping on the spot uh, that late. I appreciate you uh, joining us. Um, you know, Matt, we as we hoop... We always think of ways that we can improve our game, just be better, you know, whether it's in the weight room, on the court. We, there's always, there's been all these tools lately, right? Like there's the the, the ball handling gloves that you could use, uh, ankle weights to make mm-hmm. us jump higher, the shooting gun. Um, you have stepped into this arena as well, founding Athletic LLC. Um, you want to give us a little origin story on on uh, the company and and when did you decide to to start this? Yeah, I'd love to. By the way, I use those ankle weights, the dribbling gloves. I've done all that stuff. So uh, is it Corn Godwin? I think with like the the gloves with no with no grip. Yeah, the gu- the goggles. Yeah. I don't know if you've used those. Oh yes, the dribble, yes, yes. The heavy ball, everything. Um, so yeah, I've always had a passion for for getting better. My dream was always the NBA. Um, as you mentioned, I had a, had a cup of coffee, wish I was still there, but, uh, now I've been overseas the last few years, but I've always had a passion for improving my game and trying to become the best shooter I could be. And when I was at university of South Dakota, 2016, I was shooting on the gun a lot. And I was shooting with one of my assistant coaches, 
a lot as well, just one-on-one, Coach Hanson. And, you know, I mean, legitimately probably about a thousand shots a day. And it just kind of dawned on me that all my shots in practice and workout settings, not like live practice, but, you know, when I'm working out on my own, were wide open. And in the game, most of those shots are contested, right? And we've done studies, it's 80 to 90% are contested. So, you know, I was in my redshirt year at South Dakota. I was in a business class with some guys and some buddies. I told them about my idea and they helped me put together like a $50 prototype, just a, a PVC pipe from Home Depot that had a hole in the middle that you could, um, well, actually, I didn't even really talk about the idea. I wanted something to contest me in practice, right? So that's how this happened. We created this PVC pipe that had some cardboard hands at the top and it had a hole in the middle. So if you're shooting on the gun, the ball could come through the middle. You could catch it. You could it. receive the pass. Yeah. Yeah. So that was how it started. And these guys helped me put that together. We even tried connecting it to the gun. Uh, you know, it was exciting, but you know, next, next thing you know, season started and I'm practicing every day and the idea was kind of out of sight, out of mind for a few years as I was just trying to become a pro and focused on, you know, my college career. So 2020, COVID hits, as we all remember, and now I had a little bit of downtime. I was in Cleveland. Uh, you know, my first paycheck came in, so I had a little bit of money from the Cavs. And I go back home and the idea comes back to my mind because uh, we were doing these one-on-one workouts in Cleveland. So you couldn't you didn't have any defense. There's nothing uh, contesting your shots. So reached out to an engineer friend of mine, told him the idea. He said, good idea, add technology. So we added a little technology to it, created a, a prototype for like a thousand bucks. It had like a half circle. I mean, it looks ridiculous. I don't think it's in that origin video, but like a half circle with some sensors, the ball passed the sensors, triggered these arms to go up, contest your shot. Um, from then on, it was like, okay, you know, this is, uh, you know, this is a cool idea, but need to put some real money into it and see if it could be anything. So, um, put some real money into it and took a leap of faith and, uh, created a next version of the prototype that the arm could move fast enough and could mirror the ball. And now it's evolved into some that, um, not only can test your shots, but is actually helping players through AI and, uh, software that's helping players improve their shot too. Unreal. There's a lot of things in there I'd like to cover, but I need to start off, Matt, by saying here's my spicy take I tweeted a little a while ago. Um, you know, there's a lot of ways where you know to improve your shot and and become a better shooter, Matt. In my opinion, I think the shooting gun is the most overhyped machine in basketball. Not but not because it's it's great that it gets rebounds. But the way the shooting gun dishes the ball to you and like when you're shooting, I almost think it makes shooters lazy because it's it's the perfect pass every time. Um, and I think sometimes for people, um, it, it makes you shoot more on your palms rather than keep the ball on your fingertips just because you keep getting these like hard passes and you're like stationary. What's your take on the shooting gun, first of all? Like, I, I, Interesting I, I, take, I, yeah. Yeah, I think a human passer, I always felt a, like a better shooter when I was getting that human pass. Yeah, interesting. I, I've heard a lot of people talk about the gun um, and Dr. Dish is another shooting machine. It's not super uh, realistic because the pass doesn't come from that angle a lot, which is the beauty of our machine. But I'll be honest, I love the gun. I mean, it, uh, and quite honestly, we're looking to potentially partner with with them or Dr. Dish <laughs> because we're compatible okay. with them. Um, so, but I do love the gun and we talked to the founder of the gun, John Joseph, uh, a couple weeks ago. Well, there um, you go. Really impressive guy. But uh, um, where okay. was I going? Yeah, where was I going with that? No, I just you're told- probably, I, You're probably going to strike down that spicy take I just had. You probably just, just strike that down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, no, I, I, uh, no, I think your take is valid to some degree because, uh, you know, the passes aren't going to be coming from there all the time. There's not a net in your way, this and that. Um, the passes aren't going to be perfect all the time. You're spot on. But um, maybe with the addition of athletic, it changes. It changes everything. It changes the the sort of the 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 necessity to be shot ready and be super focused uh, upon release because you're getting that contest. 
Yeah, that's what we want to do is we want to give players game reps, right? Um, you know, statistically speaking, uh, 80 to 90% of shots in games, if you look at um, any level, really, even you look at high school, college, NBA, 80 to 90% in games are contested. Practice, you're not shooting with the contest. So, you know, you get lazy. You can take your time on your shot. And then you look at the shooting percentages. Um, there was a study done in 2018 that on contested shots, and this is how they uh, identified contested and uncontested, but their study, when they identified contested shots, the average three-point percentage in the NBA was 30%, roughly 30%, and uncontested open shots was 37%, roughly 37%. So you got a big jump, and as a as a hooper yourself, you know that's a huge jump in three-point percentage. That goes from a good three-point shooter to a pretty to bad shooter who you, you just – lay off them, right? So, um, you know, there's a big jump in contested and uncontested. And I think a part of the reason, a big part of the reason is players don't practice that way. So no doubt, no but doubt. I, but I do like the gun. I like the gun. It, it helped me get reps. And uh, I think that's what they do so well. They help players get reps. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, let's, so like ground zero, um, you put fifty thousand dollars of your own money into this. Was that the oh shit? This is the real. This is a real thing moment. Yes, because at that time, I mean, people think, oh, you played in the NBA, you're rich. It was I was on a two way contract, um, you know, and I got signed in January, and COVID happened in March. Season ended, right? So I only got a couple games in with the Cavs and. And as a two-way at that time, you get paid for every day you're up with the NBA team. Um, and you get paid well, but you get paid uh, – at that time, it was five grand for every day you're up with the NBA team. So, uh, anyways, I'm going into two – sometimes I ramble, man. So, I mean, uh, that's – I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So, just a little background there. So, you know, I was up with the Cavs for two months, played a few games, but uh, – you know, I had this idea and I called my advisor, my financial advisor, a great guy uh, from Lubbock. And I just told him, hey, I got this idea. I believe in it. You know, I'm taking pretty much all my money away from you at this time because it was my rookie year. And I said, uh, you know, what do you think? And obviously he makes money as my advisor when I make money. And he told me, he's like, you believe in it? Go for it. And he told me he thought it was a great idea. So uh, at that moment, it was like, yeah, this is everything I got. I got nothing to my name, but I, f I felt confident, confident in the idea. I know that, uh, you know, I know that God will provide for me either way. And I, uh, was excited to go for it. Really cool part of the startup founder journey is the early recruitment process, because look, man, you're a great basketball player, a marketable guy, you know what you're doing at the same time. You may, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're not an engineer. You're not the one making the software together and, and packaging it and building the hardware. So I'm sure along this journey, very early on, you had to recruit that first teammate to Athletic who was the technical piece of this who could help start building the infrastructure. Who was your first teammate? How did you convince them to join you? Yeah, yeah, great question. Because early on, I was you know trying to find people to invest in my idea, and they're like, you know, who's in this with you? And, you know, this is a full-time job and you're playing professional basketball. So right. I realized early, like I needed people to, uh, I needed to bring people on, give up equity, give up, um, you know, shares in the company. And it's hard to do that. But then once you do it, you realize this is what you got to do or you're going to go nowhere. So it's hard as hell to do that because I know once you incorporate, you see all those shares, it's like your biological baby. You're basically your people like the equity splits, which is a whole whole thing. Sorry, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay. I'll come back to that. All right. Um, <laughs> but the first guy I brought on is a guy named Aaron Phillips. So, Aaron Phillips, this guy's a genius. Uh, he's got a tech background. Founded a company in Lubbock, Texas, called SitePro, and he was friends with my financial advisor, who I who I really trust and is a good friend. So. I built that first prototype. I didn't build it, but a engineer friend of mine in uh, Chicago built it, Mark Schwartz. And I sent my advisor the video and he said, hey, Matt, like, I know it's delicate. Like, you don't want people knowing about this yet, but can I send this to one person? And I was like, well, who is it? And he told me it was Aaron Phillips, was uh, this buddy you wanted to send it to. 
So he sends the bit the the video to Aaron Phillips, and Aaron Phillips says he was in his pantry at the time getting his son a snack, and he just like mesmerized by the video because he loves tech and he loves hoops, and uh, his son's like tugging on his leg like because he's like just mesmerized by the video. Never ended up getting him a snack, um, but that was the first guy that I brought in. Um, so obviously we talked and, you know, Aaron was a really smart guy and I'm very new to this, uh, asked for a large chunk of the company and, uh, was hard, a large chunk to me at the time, but now I realize it's, it's not as large because of what he's able to do. So, um, yeah, we've got a great relationship. He was the first guy. And then there was a, another guy shortly thereafter. I think it's, it's very tough for a lot of early stage founders. You know, I see this a lot in San Francisco. When it's time to bring on the second teammate or when we've got people are looking for co-founders, the equity split part is super important. I know I, I definitely want to talk about the, um, you know, the sports science of what you're doing and, and whatnot, but there's also like building a company, like mm -hmm. separating like your passion from actually like keeping the entity and, and, and incentivizing people to stay and help you build it. And so um, let me ask you this. What was um, one thing you learned about dishing out equity that you didn't know before and, and now you're smarter on? Yeah, the advice I got when it came to dishing out equity was because I was trying to read up on it, like how much do I give away? What does this mean for me? Like how do I maintain control of the company? All those things. And the advice I got was if, if, if it's something you feel good about and they feel good about, then it's probably the right number to give away. Um, so that was just kind of how I went about it. It made it pretty simple. Um, yeah. And if they didn't no feel they didn't feel totally good about it, then I would go a little bit. Or if I didn't feel good, they would, um, you know, I'd take a little bit more back, and we'd negotiate till we both felt good about a number. Um, so it's not easy. It's not easy to do. So respect to that, you know. So yeah, well, yeah, it wasn't easy, but uh, I think it's really important to bring guys in. You know, I've gotten advice from people. You know, business can be ruthless, right? So just bring guys in that you can trust, and you know, I got a couple guys with me, Aaron and Matt Mitchell. And, you know, we got a data and analytics guy that we just brought in too, but all three great guys that, uh, you know, I, I think I can confidently say I really trust them and we've become that's really close. Yeah. That's awesome. How, how big is your team right now? Uh, four of us. So okay. four of us. And then we got engineers that we, uh, that we work with in Chicago. Um, so they, they they've got a bigger contracted team too. Out, like, contracted okay. out. So, okay. Uh, we want to build out an internal team, but Hatch Product Development, uh, they, they do great work. And I've been fortunate to have my older brother who's working on a, you might, you might want to interview him at some point. He's working on a startup company, uh, Speed Fitness uh, workout machine, eccentric workout machine that he's, uh, and they're actually doing a big deal with, I don't, I don't know if I can even share any of this stuff. So but he's doing well and they're getting we're on, a, we're on, we're, we're, the record buttons on we record buttons on Matt. so be careful we can always it, edit it yeah out. i don't think the deal's <laughs> done yet with them but uh he's been able to advise me because he's like a year or so ahead of where i'm gonna be so he's been yeah. really helpful for that too no, no doubt it's also to have it's awesome to have your brother as a mentor not just because he's your brother but i think on and when we talk about mentorship like i i think someone who is six to 12 to 18 months ahead of you is probably a better mentor right now than Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos because they like that you can have a, a quick peek into the future of what it could be if you just do X, Y, and Z. And so um, I think that's super cool that you sort of have that, that, uh, that guidance around you. Um, when like, when was it a cool moment when you, you guys got the machine up and running um, and it like, blocked your shot <laughs> or something like <laughs> yeah uh yeah it was that was you know my uh so i'm a basketball guy my our ceo matt mitchell he's a basketball guy played college basketball aaron is uh you know loves basketball but he's got all these crazy ideas you know it needs to block your shot it needs to talk trash to you all this stuff that um you know we're we're thinking we're thinking about maybe but uh he Imagine was obsessed the hand talking shit to you <laughs> Get that shit out yeah. of here. <laughs> yeah, once it blocks you, right? So, <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe, maybe there's like a, you know, a, a trash talk mode you can put it on. Um, I'd but, invest in that. 
No, the coolest moment for me was seeing seeing people shoot on it like for the first time and just airballing, you know, just breaking because it, it affects them. They're not sure what to expect. So there's been a lot of moments like that. And then uh, our recent prototype, people think it's, you know, we're ready for production, but that's just our alpha prototype. So um, we still got a little bit of time left before we, you know, we, we're going to make the betas and then probably from there be pretty close to production. But uh, no, that was just our first legit prototype, um, but it works really well. And when, it looks when legit. You, when you brought your first couple of prototypes and tested it amongst yourself, maybe your teammates, what was the biggest things you learned? And then once you learned that, like how did you iterate on that process for the next prototype? Yeah, so it's been a it's been a process. I mean, I've also learned that it's a longer process than I ever anticipated. Um, just because you know it's uh, you know raising money, it's hard to parallel path raising money with product development. Um, it, it's better to have the money raised so that you can just keep keep going, keep going. Um, but I would say the uh, the first prototype it didn't even trace the ball. Right, the first prototype it had sensors. And the sensors recognize when the ball passed the sensors so that then it would trigger the hands to go up. So from that point on, it was, okay, how do we make this more realistic and uh, mimic a human being? Which honestly, I didn't even really ever think was possible. And then I start thinking about it, asking my engineers, they say, yes, for sure possible. So we wanted to make it mimic a human being where the arm could move fast enough and it also had the vision of a human where it knew when the player was going to shoot. And obviously, there's a lot of different contests in games, guys flying at you, they're on your side, they're behind you. Uh, all that stuff we're going to be able to mimic as well. But the main one is to be able to know where the ball is and when the player goes to shoot, be able to contest it. Um, yeah. and, and I think it's really important too to, to highlight that we'll be able to speed up the uh, – speed up the speed of the contest so that, you know, players can work on getting their shot off faster. So, uh, you know, like after that second prototype, so the first prototype, the sensors, second prototype, uh, it was able to move fast enough, but now we needed it to mirror the ball. And like when the player catches the ball, we don't want the arm to come out in the middle because, you know, it might be in their, their vision to the rim. So just, you know, a bunch of little details to where, no, we just wanted to go contest when they go to shoot. Uh, it's got to be fast enough. Um, it has to be angled. Uh, if it's straight up and down, it's not really contesting the shot as much. It's got to be angled coming towards the shooter. So we've had to tweak a lot of things, uh, but every prototype just gets better and better. Uh, um, I can nerd out on the AI stuff. I, I, I don't want to nerd out the audience but like when you when you realize that incorporating artificial intelligence into the product was a possibility um how did that like data collection process go like how did you actually integrate it to where it could start thinking a little bit for itself because that's so that's that is like that's that's next level basketball shit i mean most hoopers have no idea what i just said and, and you know we're not just talking about we're not just talking about um like a little cushion dummy, or we're not just right. talking about some little gloves, right? We're talking about something that can literally, right, mimic the closeout right. of, an, of a defender. Right. So I think there's two, there's two parts. Like, you know, we have the, uh, the software piece that has to learn how to, how to trace the ball and mirror the ball, and that's our software engineer doing all that. Um, the other part of it is the AI that's actually learning how players shoot and able to pick up on, okay, what are they doing well that's leading to more makes and what aren't they doing well that's leading to more misses. Mm -hmm. And this is what, you know, so this is what we're, we're navigating right now as a company is how do we show this piece to people um, and give them the right idea of what we're doing because people see the video, right? And you think, oh, wow, that's okay. I get that. It's contestant shots. But really to me, the bigger piece is we're actually able to help players improve their shot um, through our AI. And, and a lot of people will be skeptical of that, but here's our philosophy as a company. It's not, okay, I'm going to make Noah and Matt shoot the exact same way, right? Every, every basketball player shoots the ball differently. Every golfer swings slightly differently. Based, you know, think about any sport, quarterback, you know, you have different motions. Now there are some key characteristics that 
a lot of the great shooters have, you know, where they have good arc on their shot or um, oftentimes good shooters have their elbows in their hand under the ball. But sometimes you got guys like Kevin Durant have their elbow out. Right. And Larry Bird shoots, shoots back here. You know, Katie's Katie's got an interesting one because it almost he almost almost feels like he shoots it from the left side of his face, not not Lonzo Ball extreme. Yeah, but it's like it's like coming on my left side versus like you know like right here. Yeah, and you're exact. Some some guys are like that, um, but Katie's an elite shooter, and I mean, you look at Clay, you look at Steph, you look at KD, you look at Booker, like uh, you're lefty. I'm a lefty, yeah. So I'm yeah. I'm like. I try to I try to keep it uh try to keep it like this, you know what I mean? Yeah, it usually every, every goes in. Lefty what, can shoot. Can you shoot? When it when it doesn't go in, I return the ball because there's something wrong with no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, my my uh getting off tangent a little bit. My younger brother, great shooter, played at UC Davis actually, out there oh, near nice. Sacramento. Um, but he was he was a lefty. So lefties can shoot it, but uh Ginobili, whatever, you know, all these guys shoot the ball differently. So our philosophy as a company is, okay, we're not going to use our AI to tell everybody you have to shoot this way. We're going to use our AI to help every player perfect their shot, right? So if we can look at your shot and we can say, okay, your shooting percentage when you hold your follow through is 75%. Your shooting percentage when you don't hold your follow through, you pull it back is 55%. You know, you can use the, that data to now create good habits in your shot. Um, and, mm. and that's just one detail, but follow through, landing, starting point, you know, uh, guide hand, posture, uh, dip the ball, don't dip the ball, rotation arc, you know, all these things to actually analyze players' biomechanics and be able to help them do what they do well more often and do what they don't do well less often or improve upon it, right? So, yeah. This has That's, been, yeah. um, sorry, this is this has been a fascinating thing to see in the market. I remember when I was at Santa Clara, a couple of guys came and they're like, can we record you shoot? And I was like, no one's ever asked me that before, sure. Um, and it was the home court AI founders. Remember the first mm. sort of iteration where you put your iPhone at half court and you track someone shooting and you can see like makes, misses, et cetera. Um, and then, you know, my buddy Farhad at Hoop Fit, he has a sort of a shooting gun where um, there's like an iPad on the gun where like you shoot, it can it can track, you know, angle of, of the shot, I believe, and, and also your statistics. And now you've come in and, and sort of put some hardware piece into this as well. It, you're actually, you started with hardware, got now you incorporated software and the hardware. Uh, fascinating combination, man. Um, who is your buyer? Programs, individuals, both? Yeah. I think one point though to touch on real quick is yeah, you know, the, sure. re the reason we added this software and this AI is because, you know, just myself and talking to my team and other players, it's like, we need to create something that really helps players improve, right? If if we're just contesting shots, it's just a small piece of it. You know, it's gonna make it's gonna make it more game like. But how do we really help players improve? And uh, how do we also give coaches the data to be confident they're helping players, right? Versus because a lot of the coaches we talk to, they they fear getting in players' heads sometimes or messing them up by giving them tips, right? Um, but to answer your question. You know, our initial target market is teams, uh, but we, uh, you know, we'll definitely have, uh, we definitely have a market for dads. Um, we have a software that's going to be able to teach kids how to shoot, right? So dads who don't know how to teach kids how to shoot, we'll have a software included with our, with our contest that can <laughs> so, teach them how to shoot. So all of them? Yeah. Yeah, all of them. <laughs> every dad. <laughs> Mostly for, every yeah. dad. Yeah, every dad. For, pretty much. Maybe, you know, except for the... Uh, the NBA coach who has a son who, you know, <laughs> I give my, I'm giving dads a hard time, but dads, dads know a lot, think they know a lot more than they do. <laughs> no, I, I was blessed. I had, my dad taught me how to shoot, but sometimes, you know, kids, you don't want to hear from your dad anymore. Right. And, uh, you know, they're in your ear every shot. Right. So, uh, initially teams, right. Who can buy the subscription for their whole team, for the whole program. Um, you know, they'll be able to, coaches will be able to track all their guys. Guys can come in, put in their profile, um, track all their shots, get feedback on their shots. Um, their, their percentage is what they're doing well, what they're not doing well. Um, 
simplify it for each player, contest their shots, right? So, you know, it's, uh, you know, we, we want to be the future of shooting. Yeah, no doubt, man, no doubt. Um, and so you've you've raised, uh, you've taken investor money mm-hmm. outside capital to help build this. You kind of have to because not only the hardware, the software, uh, making sure, you know, your engineers can continue to produce sort of the best feedback loops process for basketball players. Um, as a founder, like as, as someone, you're still playing basketball, you've raised capital, um, what is something you've learned in the process that you could give advice to other founders who are raising capital um, and, and just in general? Because I think we all, we've all learned different stuff raising capital. I'm curious what you've, what you've come across, what you've, your biggest learnings. Yes, good question. Um, you know, I would say uh, I was a bit naive early on. You know, this is, this is my idea. Uh, you know, I've got a lot of great feedback on it. But, you know, at the end of the day, people are putting in their hard-earned money to it. They really got to believe in you as the founder. They got to believe in what you're doing and what you're building. So, um, you know, very, very blessed to have, uh, you know, raised half a million and got people who have backed us. And we've gotten quite a few players that have backed us. We did a players-only round, um, oh, even with even with tough. overseas guys, couple of, a couple NBA Um, But some G League overseas guys who might not usually be able to um, invest um, at uh, whatever, a 25,000 minimum or something like that. We've let some of those guys get in. But, uh, you know, I've I've learned that uh, fundraising is is really difficult. And my strategy early on was to go back to Lubbock, Texas, because my Texas Tech connections and playing there for a year and we had a great year, um, made some great ties. uh, But. You know, I've I've learned that a lot of those those people there that um, that love me and support of me, like this might not be their typical investment, right? And uh, you know, I wish I would have gotten a little bit more creative with fundraising and bringing a guy in. So now we've got some guys helping us who have those networks and those connections. Um, but it's it's a lot harder than I thought, and you know, just to be be more prepared early on. Um, just be more buttoned up and, you know, with the, with our pitch deck and with our exit strategy, like all these things that investors want to know. So now we've got all that covered and, um, we're having some great conversations with people. No doubt, man. No doubt. Um, wow. This is, this has been awesome. Um, you know, in five years, what is going on with athletic five years from now, five years from now? We're in every gym across the country. Uh, you know, we had an investor say, you know, who owns the gym, right? Like, is there any company that owns the gym? And, you know, truthfully, there isn't. You got Noah and you got Home Court and you got The Gun and Dr. Dish and Shot Track. You got all these companies, um, but nobody owns the gym. And, you know, our goal is to own the gym. I think shooting is the future of basketball, right? You look at threes per game every year, it just keeps climbing, 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 climbing right? Everybody wants shooters. Everybody wants to improve on their shot. You know, shooting coaches are at a premium and there's a lot of bad ones out there. Um, but our technology, our AI, it's, you know, enhances every coach's ability, every shooting coach's ability, gives players the data they need to know what they're doing well, what they're not doing well. And then it can test shots in real time. So, you know, it makes it game like it's doing everything in one. And, uh, you know, we want to be in every gym across the country and shoot 360 in colleges and high schools. Uh, you know, we'll have a, a unit for, you know, at home that players can use outdoors. Um, you know, we got a lot of really, really cool ideas. And, you know, the other thing too is, you know, our patent covers all sports, right? So the contested piece and the AI, AI piece can transfer to other sports, you know, an easy one visually to, to, um, think about is volleyball, right? You know, they're going to hit the ball and, you know, ours can test at the net. So, um, you know, we have the capability to go into other sports. The data we're collecting is valuable in a lot of different areas. So that's the future, man. Coming to my, coming to a gym near you, baby. Just be prepared for that hand and go just jump at you. You're like, what the hell is that? Well, that's Matt's thing. And it's in every, it's it's uh it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> so um Matt, I really appreciate it, man. It's been a great episode with Matt Mooney, professional basketball player, founder of Athletic. Matt, 
best of luck and uh, look forward to getting my shot right and not being so washed up anymore. Yeah, man. When uh, when we launch this, I want to send it to you and uh, we'll do a little three point contest, me and you. Man, let's do it, man. And we got we got all the the peanut gallery of SF here. All the tech guys want to see that. Um, all the investors want to see that. So that'd be fun. We're gonna set it up. We can set it up. Okay. All right. Yeah, cool, I gotta man. get I gotta get my shot right. I gotta get my shot right. <laughs>